Good evening and welcome back to another week of In the Spotlight with Tabitha Collins. I'm Tabitha Collins and welcome back again, like I said, for another week on the show. This evening we have a very special guest, one that is definitely near and dear to my heart. We have um, the amazing Dr. Marisa R. Dick. Yay! Hey, Dr. Hey. <laughs> and Dr. Dick is, I don't know where to begin um she's a mentor a lecturer a college professor um at a hbcu she is a business owner a author and she holds a phd in educational studies and cultural foundation dr dick welcome to the show thank you so much for having me miss tabitha i'm honored to be here Thank you. I am honored for you to be on the show. And, um, you know, I I always have to say, well, I, I won't say I have to say, we always said it takes a village um, as a culture. We've always said it takes a village. And I have to tell you that um, I would not have a bachelor's degree without <laughs> you. And she is the most amazing mentor um, audience and it takes a village and she and she walked me through that and would not let me give up even when I did because um, maybe some of you don't know I was in college in the 90s we did the whole you know flunk out party out thing. I went back as an adult student to uh, one of our HBCUs and completed my bachelor's degree in sociology with a concentration in criminal justice and Dr dick was my mentor on that campus and really walk me through that thing. So um, I just wanna make sure she has her flowers now. Oh, I appreciate it, but you did all the work. Excellent <laughs> <Yes>. student. <laughs> so uh, another reason that we have this amazing woman on the show tonight is because as you know, as a broadcast, we are always encouraging, empowering, and uh, educating our viewers uh, one at a time, week to week. Um, our theme this year is I'm trying. And um, Dr. Dick has several businesses outside of her regular job as a college professor. And I want to make sure that we highlight them so we can get um, her products in your hand, her services to you, um, and however that looks for you and your family. So Dr. Dick, first of all, let's start off with, um, let's rewind a little bit and tell us a little bit about you. Well, I am um, a very simple person that has a lot of passion for uh, helping others. Um, you know, I believe uh, in utilizing your gifts. Your gifts definitely make room for you. And I am blessed in the fact that God has really uh, enabled me to help people, uh, whether it's starting their own business or helping them uh, with their 501c3 applications. And students, I am very, very passionate about college students, in particular, first generation college students who don't understand what campus life is about. And I speak to those students, help them navigate so they can have a successful freshman year. And then after I do all of that, I love to sit back with a good book. <laughs> and fortunately, I actually enjoy my own book. <laughs> and so they are a uh, fantasy romance novels. And so in my downtime, I like to write as well. So I'm a very, um, not a cumbersome person, it's not a whole bunch to me, but I like to serve and give and share what I have. And, and let's start there. Um, I have in 1998, you birthed the Nubian romance novels. They are uh, African-American contemporary Christian sci-fi romance novels. Did y'all get that? They are African-American contemporary Christian <laughs> sci-fi romance novels. And we're, and, and everybody's always, you know, you know, where, you know, where's my husband at, you know, where's my, you know, you know, we, as women, you know, just as our nature, we love, 
we, we love romance. And um, Dr. Dick, tell us about how that whole concept, you know, was birthed. And and please don't forget to hold up, share the books. Uh, we'll start with that. Okay. Well, thank you. I first started uh, writing fantasy after uh, I divorced uh, over 20 years ago. So I've been writing for a while. So during that process, I needed something to do. And I had all this going on in my mind and in my heart. And I sat down and just started writing. And the characters came and I finished one book. And then that led to another book and another book. And actually, I was returning to school as an adult myself to receive my undergraduate degree. And it was in correcting my own paper. I kept saying, what is this? I could see this conversation in my homework. And I'm like, this doesn't belong here. And so I would delete it. And then again, as I'm going through my papers, I'm still seeing these conversations. And I realized, oh my God, these are characters. And I just, kept going from there. And before I knew I was not consumed with the divorce, my life just kept on moving. And um, I just really believe God put them in my life to help me occupy my time and keep my mind straight, you know? Right. And, and so it really helped. And, and, you know, and, and my best friend actually uh, wrote a book out of some of the sim same similar situations. Sometimes, you know, you know, got to give you what you need when you need it. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, it not even as a distraction and, and I guess what we go through is our ministry and so mm -hmm. many words. So it's like, you know, now you're, you're able to take that pain or however you were feeling after a situation and bless somebody else with, you know, the knowledge that you learned and gained from that situation, you know, in, in characters, like yours was birthed into characters. Mm -hmm. So um, do you want to share um, some of what the, the books look like? Sure. So, well, we'll this, tell everybody where to get yours at the end. We'll let you know where you can get it at the end. And when you contact her for a book, you might even get an autograph if you act right. <laughs> <laughs> well, certainly this book is entitled Angel Fire. Okay. And in Angel Fire, you see Natasha is sitting in church. But she has all this scenery going on in her mind. So how many of us sitting in church, listening to the word, but our minds have drifted off someplace else? Every for <laughs> yes, for <laughs> Natasha, <laughs> she's in church praying to God for a husband mm -hmm. and she's fighting her flesh, you know? Yes. And so just because we're Christians, that doesn't mean we don't have to go through some of the same struggles. Our mm -hmm. thing is that we can always ask for forgiveness. Yes. And so that's what Angel Fire is about, the struggles of trying to maintain your virtue when your flesh is acting up as a single person. And that uh, reaches from the pulpit to the back door because yeah. there are preachers in here struggling. There are deacons, there's music, there's the spiritual warfare going on above her head. And she's thinking, she's imagining these things, but we know spiritual warfare is real. And yeah. so Natasha is going through that. And then this book, Letters, uh, the main character here is Moses. So when I say tall, dark, and handsome, <laughs> Moses <laughs> is so fine. <laughs> and he is praying to God. He's a single father. And he's praying to God for a wife to help him raise his daughter, Zipporah, who is endowed with many spiritual gifts. Mm -hmm. And so within there, he starts um, writing uh, to a pen pal just out of the newspaper. And then that transitions forward. And then here, 
this book is called Cousins. And there's something in particular about cousins in this book. It's a small little Southern town with sisters who own a store. The sisters are bipolar opposites and just they are living life and things happen. And then this stranger comes to town, but he comes with intent to make sure that he meets Melanda. And so he meets the son. And so that is that book. And then here we have Deja Vu Desires. And in this book, this young lady, Davina, is uh, virtuous. She's never been with um, anyone. And she's been praying to God as well for her husband. So she fantasizes a lot, so much so she has um, a problem delineating reality from the fantasy in her mind. Mm -hmm. And so are the fantasies that she's having, did they step out of her mind and now standing before her in reality? So that is a very excellent, excellent book. And then my uh, last book, Them's Eve's Daughters, Melanda, excuse me, Melanda Eve <laughs> is um, in love. But her first love was this man right here, Don Paul. So this is a book about an interracial uh, relationship. So she's in love with Marcus, but in our heart, her first love was Don Paul, who is a Caucasian man. And so because this book is set back in the day in Mississippi, um, we know they couldn't be together. And so, you know, he was her first. He still always protected her behind the scenes. And still, regardless to them being in Mississippi, Don Powell was willing to go through it all because he loved her. But Eve didn't want to live her life that way. And so she has five daughters and each daughter has a different personality. And so who does she pick in the end? Don Powell? the love of her life, or the good reverend Marcus. <laughs> oh. And so they are very flavorful, but tastefully so. It leads a lot to the imagination. And, and you know, and I, I think that is good because even, you know, when I was single, we were always searching for what can we read? You know, you know, what can help us, you know, you know, is anybody else going through this and you sit in church and you go to these singles groups and, and you're, you know, and you're praying to God and you're like, when are you going to send him and all this stuff? And sometimes all of your questions are not answered and you have to, you know, you know, you know, get to another source to, you know, try to, you know, get yourself together. So um, I am, I am glad that we had this opportunity to get this information out there because this show, um, as you know, goes over the internet it goes globally and you never know someone over in you know um we have a broadcaster i think she's from like australia you never know somebody over there might be saying you know let me get this book into my hand or you have that niece or that daughter or that auntie or somebody that needs to you know to hear these stories that can help them you know along their along their journey so um i thank you for putting that out there so everybody at the end we will make sure that you know all of Dr. Dick's information so you can get these books into your hand. And what we're going to do when we come back from the break, we're going to move into um, uh, 2018 when she birthed her transition counseling service that I think is amazing. And I think so many of us right now um, with teenagers close to graduating um, or going that transition from high school to college will benefit from this next business we're going to share with you. And then um, lastly, she has another business. Ain't she amazing? Um, <laughs> that she birthed in 2021 and it's called the Paperwork Guru for You Incorporated. And she is going to share what that looks like. So don't go away. Don't lose your place. Don't move your seat. We will be right back, uh, Tabitha, in the spotlight. We are shining the light on entrepreneurs, um, pastors, teachers, 
preacher, the, the man with the corner store, we are getting the word out to our audience to let people know that we are here and we are being a blessing and a, and a help to the community in this time, in this day and age. Don't you move a muscle. We'll be right back. I'm Dr. Raquel Tolson, host of Blessed Mindset Matters. Is your mind on your money? Are you ready to be more intentional with your money? Then get my free booklet, Mind on My Money, Plan, Pocket, Protect. In this booklet, I offer you practical suggestions on planning intentionally, pocketing wisely, and protecting your money. Get the booklet at www.raykeltolson.com. That's R-A-Y-K-E-L-T-O-L-S-O-N. Get your free copy today. And thank you so much for joining us for the second half of In the Spotlight with Tabitha Collins. Um, I am Tabitha. And once again, my show shines a light on the community, community activism, entrepreneurship. Um, we are here to get the word out. Um, compel people to come over the hedges and the byways. We're here to be a blessing to um, the community. And on the first half, we introduce um, Dr. Dick. Dr. Dick is a mentor, a lecturer, a college professor, a business owner, and an author. And she was sharing with us on the first half um, her books, and we will make sure that you get that information um, in the end. And now we're going to talk about a business that came about in 2018. It's a transition, a transitional counseling service. Well, Dr. Dick, give them the correct title. I'm missing it. <laughs> Thank you. The business is actually called Transitions Consulting Services. Yes. And so what we do with Transitions Consulting Services is help students transition from high school to college life. You know, we have to get students into the mindset. First of all, we need to recognize everybody doesn't go to college for the same reason. Some students are going to college to just experience life. Some are really going because they really want to earn a degree in a specific area. And others just want to go just to have the experience. And all those things are good. But in gaining all of that experience, you still need to understand the process of academia and how that works. And so from high school, they're still young enough where their minds and thought processes can be guided, you know, and teaching them the uh, right classes to sign up for. I am also a professional academic advisor and I created a course entitled um, uh, Academic Success, SCS. And so it's important for students to understand how their behavior impacts their academic career, how not studying, what time they select their classes, the events they participate in, and exactly how they are living their lives as well as the activities that they participate in should not overwhelm them. And they need to understand that this is, students can come and earn a four year degree and move forward. You don't have to be there for five, six, seven, and eight years. If you get in your mind, this is just for a season, you know? And so transitions, we help them along with that by offering counseling services, teaching them the uh, what to look out for, knowing your body. If you know you can't um, wake up for an eight o'clock class, well, then you need to register early. <laughs> Take advantage of early registration because there's no need for you signing up for an eight o'clock class that you're never going to go to. 
Right. So, you know, we help students deal in reality and it has been very successful. I have held this workshop at different churches even spoken uh, to the Girl Scouts here in Greensboro about it. And I've had students just come back and say, oh my goodness, Dr. Dick, everything you shared with me, I already knew how to read syllabus. I already knew what to do. And so thank you for that. And those things are really, really invigorating for me because it's my purpose to intentionally have a positive effect on students so they can go in, earn their degree, make sure you're utilizing the campus resources because they're there for you to be successful. So, you know, why not utilize them because you're paying for them, whether you use those resources or not. And so we get them prepared for what's getting ready to come academically. And that's so important because, uh, you know, I, I, I have to say, which is another reason why I wanted to have you on the show, because when you know better, you'll do better, right? Yes. And I And if I would have, I think me and my friends were talking, we said if we would have had somebody, you know, on our campus and not to, to, not to discount you know, PWI, predominantly um, white institutions. But when you have somebody on a campus that might look like you and you come from a family, and you're the first generation, you're African-American young girl or boy or whatever, you have to tell us to lead and have guided us in the right direction so we could have so we could have started off right and had the right footing to be successful but you know if you don't have that and you're 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 flying by the seat of your pants um you know sometimes you know we we fail right if we didn't have the you know the right backing Mm -hmm. and um so now you know with sharing this information and putting this information out there this gives somebody the opportunity that might be that 17 18 year old that's getting ready to graduate from high school going to college and say i don't know what to do i'm i'm first generation even if i'm not first generation i'm going to a school where everybody might not look like me or even if i'm at a school where everybody looks like me i might not have that person that you know that that i know that cares so they can tap into the transition consulting services and say you know i need that help or their parent might say can you help my child you know i don't know i didn't go to college so i think that it's so important to put this information out there because now this can help somebody else and that is what my show is all about shining the light on 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 the sources that people can tap into to just be a blessing to help somebody else if one person sees this show and they say this can help my child then it was worth it all right exactly so so this so this is why this is so important this this business i was like oh my god and because i'm about to face this you know my daughter's only going to ninth grade but when she gets ready baby i am definitely going to call you because she is the one that thinks she already got it together she already knows she's going to hillman notice i said hillman Uh. (laughs) you know she going to hillman and she got her dorm picked out and and you know but but life is going to you know you know shake her up when she realizes it's not a tv show and you really, right. you know, you're not a morning person. Mm-hmm. So, but, and you know, so the stuff that she's saying, the stuff that you're saying um, is going to be so important to her in the next four years. So I'm just hoping that someone can tap into this information and like and share this show. So if they have that college, high school senior, um, that they can get them, you know, the help that they need. And maybe they have the best guidance counselor in the world and they got together and that's fine, but someone is going to need this information. So I thank you so much for um, sharing that. Do you go into the high schools? Is this something that um, a, maybe a high school principal can, you know, see on their watch this or they might be a high school from another area and they can have you know set something that where you they can zoom you in and you know I'm going to share this with some of my friends that are high school um um principals and you know like so is this something that they can get with you and they can say hey can you come and talk to our school do you, is, do you go into high schools I absolutely do I also go into churches <laughs> Pre-COVID, I have two curriculums 
And mm -hmm. so I do have a curriculum for Christian. And then I have a curriculum for secular because, you know, we have to, we're, we're Christians, but we have to realize our children are out here in a, a, a very secular kind of triple X world. Our children are exposed to things that maybe in my time, I wouldn't even have knowledge of. You thought of. Yeah. And so to have them um, with the uh, Christian curriculum, everything is undergirded with biblical scripture. Mm -hmm. And so um, with that, I go into the church. I have activities for the students to uh, work with. They work in groups the way they would have to participate in an actual classroom. Okay. And so that's with Christendom. And then with um, just somebody out there that's not into the church, they, their children still need wisdom as well right. and things to look out for. So absolutely, I do go to high schools. I have done so. And I definitely go to churches and share transitions consulting services with them. Yeah, I'll definitely be tagging my uh, my friends that are in um, higher education because um, you 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 know you never know you know and um, and look I say all the time I thank God that the '90s were not taped okay <laughs> I thank God you can't find no tape because we didn't have the internet. <laughs> I mean, the I'm world sure world. everybody's happy about that. I said, I said, the worst you can find is an old page or a beeper or something, but you are, <laughs> but you are so right. These kids have so much coming at them in yeah. real time in this generation. And, you know, and even though, um, you know, everyone's not a Christian, different religions and, yeah. you know, and everything. And we, we respect and love everyone's religion, you know, exactly. that's their thing. Um, so it's good that you have two versions. So mm -hmm. if anyone out there, you know, wants to, you know, invite you to come, they, you know, you can, if you so choose, you can choose the regular standard secular version of her services. So that's awesome as well. And um, just so time doesn't get away from us, I want to also get into your, your third business that you got into. And um, you started in 2021, the paperwork guru for you incorporated. Can you elaborate on that and tell us the goals and um, what that looks like? Well, in a snapshot, the paperwork guru for you is I help other people who desire to own their own business to become entrepreneurs. And so I started with one truck driver and he spread the word. So I do LLCs and corporations, but my niche really is uh, completing, helping churches receive their 501c3, completing their um, application packets for their nonprofit. And so that is um, very, very important for churches to have, community organizations and the like. And so um, I've been doing it for well over 30 years. Oh, wow. And so I said, well, you know, I volunteered my services all over uh, North Carolina and outside for, um, you know, just trying to help. So I've poured into many, many uh, people and organizations. So I said, you know what, I can do this as a business. So that's how it all started. And, you know, it really started with word of mouth and just knowing the uh, different functions of um, administration, because I am an administrator as well. Mm -hmm. Um, Dr. Dick, our theme this year at the station here at WYTV7 is I'm trying. Um, we are here to continue to educate, empower, and encourage our audience. How are you trying? What are you trying to do in this season? For me personally? Overall, as a whole, Overall. Yeah, like I'm trying because that, that's the theme of the station this year. And we're asking all of our guests um, this season, um, what are they trying to do? 
Well, I'm trying to uh, actually uh, be um, and listen to my better angels. I'm trying to help people become better themselves by helping their dreams come true. I'm trying to help them flourish in their desires for entrepreneurship. Not they, they have these gifts and they just don't know what to do or where to go. So in my efforts, I make sure to guide them in the right direction. And I'm a person who stays in her lane. If someone comes to me and says, Dr. Dick, can you help me? I have no knowledge of that, but let me get you to someone who does. I'm trying to get students to be proactive and productive once they get in school. I want to prepare them for what's getting ready to come before they get there so their minds can be straight. I'm trying to utilize the skills that God enabled me to have to better other people, myself, and just my community at large. I mean, I really believe there's enough out here in this world for everyone. I'm not the only book author. Everybody has a book. Everyone has been through something that they can write about. But how do you go about that process in achieving that and getting that book done? You know, so I try my best to share everything that I have with others. So simply because it has not maybe um, come to fruition for me, doesn't mean the knowledge that I have that I can pour into you won't make you blossom. So I want people to utilize their gifts and be calm and, and be who they believe they can be and who God has enabled them to be. They just need a little bit of help. Thank you so much for sharing that. And could you, um, lastly, we're, we're about to end out. Can you share how everyone can get in contact with you from uh, your books to the transition consulting to paperworks on down, how you can be reached? Okay, they can call 336-289-8113. And my um, website for the Paperwork Guru for you is www.thepaperworkguru, the number four and the letter u.com or um, at gmail.com. And then for the uh, romance novels, it's nubianromance.com. Thank you so much, Dr. Dick, for being on the show. It has definitely meant the world to me this evening. You can reach me, Tabitha Collins, at Tabitha, T-A-B-A-T-H-A, spotlight at gmail.com. Or you can give me a call at 980-907-3136. Thank you so much for being a guest on this week of Tabitha in the Spotlight. And we enjoyed you so much. And please like and share our show. If you feel so inclined, donate to WYTV7.org. We are a nonprofit station and we are here each week um, at 6 p.m. on a Thursday to continue to encourage, empower, and educate our guests one at a time. Take care and God bless. Thank you.